Right. Thank you, John, anyway, and thank you, David and Helen. After listening now to um, a personal journey and some uh, detailed numbers and graphs, you'll get, as Monty Python says, something completely different. I'll be very fluffy. I'll talk about um, general principles for making the financial sector more sustainable and how it can help creating sustainability in the long run. Not like this. Um, the financial sector is both a villain and a hero, of course. The financial sector can help us grow in a good way. It creates efficiency, income, but, as you know, it also can create bubbles and financial crises. Um, it has the power and the funds, and now I can hear myself, and the money to invest or fund investments to change technology into greener, more sustainable technologies. But it also can be very myopic, once again creating short-termism, maybe financial crises. Looking at the financial sector today, and I will skip a number of slides because somebody stole my time, um, obviously the financial sector can do lots of things, or need to do a lot of things. The financial sector need to be changing in a sustainable way, not only when it comes to environment and climate, but as David said, also when it comes to taking a longer term view of investments and the cyclical swings in general in, in society, in order to combat the financial crisis, um, unemployment and inequality, the financial sector needs to change. But the, the financial sector is crucial when it comes to transforming the economy for the better in an environmental sense. We know that the necessary investments are going to be huge over the next decades. I'll show you some figures in a, in a moment. Um, that's going to be funded via the financial sector. We're going to need more emissions rights trading in a good way, not the way that the ETS has worked. That has to be done via the financial sector. If we don't only look at mitigation, but also at adaptation, we need well-working uh, insurance solutions through the financial sector once again. Um, the financial sector, including the banks, need to revamp their credit strategies, their ownership strategies, in order for them to make their lending sustainable. I'll come back to that. And then, of course, we need to shape up when it comes to analysis and knowledge about all these things. Otherwise, we will not be able to function. So there are huge tasks ahead of us in the financial sector. And if we don't live up to this, there will be no sustainable transformation in the economy as a whole. Looking at the numbers, this is from recent OECD sources. When they try to calculate the kind of investment sums that are necessary over the next couple of decades to move to a more sustainable economy, they land in a total area of about 100 US trillion dollars. That's 100,000 billion dollars. Now, uh, that's not the only way of looking at things though, because you might think of this as a gross number, it's hugely big and you sort of have to take it from zero, but that's not the correct way of looking at things, of course, because even if there's no green transformation and we continue business as usual, there will be huge investments. They will not be as good, they will not be as beneficial, but they will be there anyway. And if you compare sort of the green transformational investments with those that would take place in a business as usual scenario, then the situation looks quite different. This is from the new Climate Economy Report, um, which you probably, most of you have seen, if not downloaded and read it, because it's quite good. Their calculation says that the base case is about 90, and then you add the different sort of changes that we have to do if the base case is to be turned into green case. And then, of course, there's hardly any net additions at all. The point is that if you can make the investments that would go into fossil fuel instead go into non-fossil, they would be greener, but the net new cost would not be as big as all. I think this is a very sort of productive way at looking at these numbers, because if you just look at the sort of total numbers, not taking into account that you need to subtract the base case, then the, the case looks all, the task looks overwhelming. However, this is easier said than done, though, because for us, the financial sector, to move in this direction and to make the context of investments greener, we need help. I don't think it's feasible unless politicians do a number of things. Um, for the financial sector to change these investments and to fund green investments, we need long-term commitment from the policy side. We need 
very clear signals about long-term relative price changes, i.e. fossil fuels should become more expensive, renewables less expensive. So we need uh, clear signals about what taxes and subsidies will hold, in the best case globally, but at least nationally. We need cap and trade systems that can be trustable, once again, not like the European system. And we need to know what kind of regulations that will sort of uh, add to the relative price signals that come. We need private-public partnerships for investment, not least in public infrastructure. Uh, we need more R&D, of course, to, to, um, to uh, let's call it climate and energy and uh, environmental issues in total. We need foreign aid to the less developed countries or the emerging markets. And not least, from a macro point of view, since I'm a macroeconomist, we need to change the GDP measurements. Now, that's slowly happening with the Eurostat, the OECD, the World Bank and others working on new measurements of beyond GDP. But it'll probably take, when I talk to Statistics Sweden, they say it'll take another 10 years. But it will, we will eventually be there. Now, if all these jigsaw puzzle pieces come into place, then I think you can actually make it quite credible that the net cost to society of this transformational change is positive. I mean, oh, sorry, negative. There will be no cost. It will actually be a gain. I know this is difficult to read. Once again, it's from the same source. The point here is, of course, that negative numbers is negative cost. And the point is here, this is what we add in costs in investing in renewables. But we gain because costs of fossil fuels will diminish. Um, we have the same thing in, in financial costs. This is sort of operational costs, this is financial costs. The point here is that you have net gains, both in amortization and operating expenses and in net financial benefits over there. And here, of course, you have added or subtracted the stranded costs or costs of stranded assets. If you get these credible changes of relative prices, then a number of investors will draw the conclusions that they should not invest in fossils because fossil assets will not be worth what they seem to be worth today. They will be stranded assets. And if you take all these things into account, actually the calculation ends with a huge benefit, not only in general terms, but also on bottom line terms. This is not happening today. Uh, it'll, take, it'll take some time, it'll take some years, I don't know how much, but I think most financial investors and financial sector people are looking at this, starting to learn, starting to understand, and gradually sort of preparing for this new situation. And we do that in different ways in different companies. Uh, I work for a bank. Uh, we are the fathers or mothers, if you want to, of the green bond. We're very proud of that. It's been in existence now for, well, seven years and we are still the world leaders, despite the big dragons gradually coming into this market. I think the green bond concept will develop in many different ways. Um, I uh, can say that we are working on making it also to a, uh, into a retail product with much smaller scale, possible to use in many, many different kinds of sectors and projects which are not possible to have green bonds today. But I think Maybe even more important for banks is that we change our credit policies and our ownership strategies. This is what we're doing, and I think most banks are doing the same, albeit in slightly different ways. Um, we lend, we give credits to companies, to projects, whatever. And what we're doing now is that we're going through our entire portfolio of credits. In a number, I, I guess the, the fonts are too small here, but we, we sort of checked up the sensitive sectors. And for each of these sectors, we have child labor, climate change, freshwater, arms and defense, forestry, fossil fuels, mining metals, renewables, and shipping. In all these areas, we now have new rules and regulation for ourselves, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. Of course, PRI is part of this, but there are a number of other things as well, including our own targets, which sometimes are higher, sometimes are lower than perhaps some of you have. Uh, this is a sort of moving target, but I think most banks are now sort of into this, working with this, setting up the way we should behave as good citizens. Not only sort of negative screening, taking out a number of projects, but also sort of supporting different kinds of projects. We have, I can't tell you exactly which, but we have said no to a number of projects 
that some of our clients have wanted to finance with credits from us, and we had said no, because you don't fit into our sustainability strategy. And that sends a clear signal, and we see changes, we hope to see changes in some of our clients' behavior. Now, looking ahead with the kind of new calculations and the new sector policies that many banks are working on, I'm sure we'll see a lot of sort of business opportunities. Someone mentioned, the, or has mentioned, the circular economy, um, which of course, children have many names, but the, the idea that you start with zero waste from the outset, um, more companies will, will move to a production or business strategy where organic waste can be reused in na nature and non-organic waste can be circulated, recirculated and reused again. Um, I guess we have our colleague from Volvo here, you might mention this after the break. I hope so anyway, because you're involved in one of the MISTRA projects working exactly with this. Uh, that leads me over uh, to say something quickly about MISTRA, since I'm on the Capital Allocation Committee. Uh, of course, what we have to do is to be stable as investors. We have to see to it that the capital lives. It doesn't have to be eternal because our founders set up MISTA for a being sort of a, should have a lifespan. We thought then about 20 years or so, it will be longer now, maybe perhaps another 15 years, because our capital is now bigger than it was when MISTA was started, despite the fact that we had spent so much on research, thanks to the stock market. But we also need a long-term horizon, obviously. Uh, we need to have su a sustainable profile, meaning, for instance, a low CO2 uh, footprint, which Oki told you about. Um, we, will, we are cutting down uh, those investments who have fossil fuels in them, one, one way or the other, and they're now an extremely, extremely small part of our, of, of our portfolio. Uh, we need to be very transparent in what we're doing. Um, Orke mentioned, in a sense, that I think it's important that we also want to be a leader and a role model and stimulate sustainable investments. One way of doing this is engaging with those who are handling our money, like Generation, and we sort of pick investors and, 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 and asset managers uh, and try to communicate with them and have an impact through voice rather than exit. I think we've been successful so far. We might could have done even better perhaps, but I think we, we can be proud of what we've done for the past 20 years as asset allocators. One of the projects which Åke mentioned was also tried to have an impact in a broader sense in, on economic research and the role of financial research in society. Sorry about the Swedish here, but we have just um, handed out, or we're going to hand out, 55 million Swedish crowns to uh, the Stockholm School of Business, Stockholm School of Economics, for a new program uh, which will create a center for sustainability research in economics. And that will be hopefully uh, quite productive and yield a number of conclusions for financial markets, theoretical and practical, for the future. I know time is running out. Let me finish with sort of a very speculative end to this presentation. If we, the financial markets, will succeed in doing all this, the financial markets will actually transform capitalism as a system, as a whole. Capitalism is quite flexible. It's gone through, I would say, three phases in the West. The laissez-faire phase of Adam Smith crashed in 1921. Then the Keynesian decades, which stagnated in the 70s and 80s. And then the freedman, free-roaming financial capitalism version, which crashed in 2008. And what we're looking for, at least what I'm looking for, and many of you too, I assume, is some kind of new capitalism which is more inclusive, more sustainable, uh, and where companies behave in a responsible way. I am pretty sure, too, that the next wave, the long wave, I actually wrote my dissertation on this about 100 years ago, the long waves of capitalism, a la Kondratiev and Schumpeter, uh, of course, this is stylized, it doesn't look like this, but I believe, actually, that the long-term, well, not cyclical, but long-term swings uh, depend on secular technological breakthroughs. And, of course, it doesn't look like this in reality, but here you have the steam engine. This is the train. Here comes the combustion, internal combustion engine and the electrical engine, broken by depression and wars. 
And here you have the sort of mat maturization of these previous technologies, and then the stagnation. And then you have the IT revolution, and this is where we are today. I believe that it's possible to get good growth, inclusive and green growth, with new technologies in energy, renewables, in urban planning, because the biggest investment program in the history of mankind is urbanization, or we talk about our urbanization program in India and China and other countries. And I think, actually, that if the financial sector can transform itself, we can be instrumental in shaping this new long wave of greener capitalism. Thank you, sir.